Shema. So my God, your God, is Jesus Christ. The one God, monotheistic faith that we have is Jesus Christ. What is that simply saying? God our Father is revealed through the Lord Jesus Christ. He is none less than God. Come in the flesh. And that little statement right there establishes the full deity of Jesus Christ. That God the Father is working through, or is in Him and through Him. Amen. Is everybody awake tonight? So then Paul goes on and he says uh, this. He says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Now he's getting ready to pray. Isn't this beautiful? He knows about all the problems. He knows about the fussing, the fighting. He knows about the division. He knows about the bickering. He knows about the opposition. But here's what he says. He says, when I think about you, I don't think about all the bad news. He said, when I think about you, he said, when I remember you, he said, I thank God for you. Say praise the Lord. Now that means that when you look at a situation, and you see it, and it may have some bad news connected to it, and there may be some problems connected to it. You have to be able to see beyond, amen, the problem, and say, I thank my God for you. Amen. Yeah, I know you're not perfect, and I know the church is not perfect, but I thank God for the church. See, we can go through life, man. We can pick each other apart. And, 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 and you know what? When we look at the situation, what we may be saying may be accurate. But the problem is when we sit around and we pick each other apart, and, and maybe with back, uh, accurate information, we leave some things out. Amen? And that is that I should thank God for my brothers and my sisters. I should thank God for the church. So Paul is preparing his heart and mind to begin to pray for this people. He doesn't focus on their problems. He focuses on, he says, I thank my God when I remember you. Praise the Lord. Amen. And that's the way the church should be. So what Paul is saying, let me show you how to handle the relationships that are in the church. Let me show you how to handle the bickering and the fussing and the fighting and the division that's in the church. Paul said, I'm going to show you how to deal with relationships in the body of Christ. And he said, the way you do it is you thank God for your brothers and your sisters. Don't sit around and pick them apart. You don't need to. The Word of God will do that. When we come to church, if something needs to be corrected, something needs to be brought in order. How many of y'all believe God can do that? How many of y'all believe God's word can do that? So I don't need to set myself up in a position of, of trying to do it myself. I have to be able to say, I thank God. That's my brother and my sister. And I'm going to trust God by His Spirit and by His Word. His enabling power, grace, to bring peace into the relationships that are there. And I'm just going to thank God for the church that I'm a part of. Amen. Say praise the Lord. There is no perfect church on this planet. Amen? What you have to do is you need, you've got to find a Bible preaching church. A church that preaches the truth. That's patterned after the apostolic church of the New Testament. What they preached. Amen. Find that church. The presence of God is there. Apostolic truth is there. The word of God is preached there. Get there. Get born again and stay planted there. Because at some point you're going to look around. You're going to see the imperfections of the church. And if you're not careful, you're going to want to run off and hide in a cave somewhere. Because you, you look at it and you go, wow, if that's what Christianity is about. Paul did not have that kind of spirit. He knew there was problems. He knew there was issues in the church. But he didn't have that attitude. He said, I thank my God. I'm going to show you how to handle relationships in the church when there's problems. What do you focus on? Man, we love to kill our wounded. We do, man. 
Somebody struggling, somebody whatever, wounded with this. Okay, just pull out the gun, boom, finish him off. That's not in the Bible. That's not what the Bible says to do. The Bible says if somebody falls, you, you are, you're, if you're a spiritual, you're supposed to seek to restore them. Not to kill them. Restore them. Amen. And the scripture says considering your own self. Right? Look at yourself before you look at them. And try to restore people. So Paul, when he writes this church, that you know, they're having problems in their area of relationship. His focus is, okay, I'm going to show you how to handle that. Thank God when you think about the people of God in the church. Question for y'all tonight. You go home tonight and you think about somebody in the church. Okay. What do you think about them? Or do, you, do you thank God for them? Or do you think about only the issues? See, what Paul is trying to show us in writing the book of Philippians, he's showing us how to handle relationships in the church. In an imperfect situation. Would you give God some praise in the house? We, we have enough division, strife, bickering, fussing, fighting in the house of God. And Paul is saying, okay, as an apostle, I'm going to show you what I do about that, how I handle that. So look at your neighbor and say, I thank God for you. And I tell you, as your pastor, I thank God for you. And I know you better than probably you know yourself. That's right, but I thank God for you. Amen. Because you belong to Jesus Christ. And you need grace just like I do. You need His enabling power just like I do. You need His peace in your life just like I do. So, hey, we're all, we all need God. We're not perfect people. We're striving for perfection. But you know what? We need to be more thankful. We need to be more thankful for each other. Come on, somebody. Are y'all with me? We got enough attitudes. We got enough division. We got enough bickering. We got enough of that, man. We need to, we need to be Christians. Amen. The church suffers because of division. And so Paul is showing us. I think it's a beautiful thing here. And he hadn't even started praying yet. But he's setting, he's setting the background. He's, he's showing you how to pray. When you pray for somebody. Okay. All right. Some of you, when you go to pray. Have, have you ever been there? Don't lift your hand. But have you ever been there? You don't know what to say. Okay. Okay. I'm going to pray. And I know I need to pray. But I don't know what to say when I pray. I'm going to help you. It's going to be so easy for you. You know what you do if you don't know what to pray? Just get out the Bible. Right? Look at the letters of the Apostle Paul. And see how Paul prayed. And start praying just like Paul. Amen. See, you don't have to guess at it then. Because you have Holy Ghost, God-inspired prayer right in the Bible. And you can just open your Bible. And you can pray the same thing as a Holy Ghost-inspired man prayed. that amazing? what I don't want to say well, I just helped you right there Paul is the pattern so anyway before he's you know he's kind of getting ready to pray and he just starts thanking God uh, for these churches say, for this church and then he goes on and he says always in every prayer of mine for you for you all notice all he said all of them even the fussers even the bickering. Are y'all awake tonight? And, and I'm not, I'm not going to tell you tonight who was bickering. I'll let you read the book of Philippians and you can find out. Okay? So look at your neighbor and say, praise the Lord. Tell him it's already helping me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's helping me. If it's not helping you, it's helping me. And, and I know where I've been. I know where I'm going. We need this as a church. So he says, always in every prayer of mine for you all. There's that word all. You know, all. Over the top. Hyperbole, all of you. 
Making requests with what? Joy. He said, I'm thanking God for you, and I'm full of joy. And 16 times in the book of Philippians, 16 times the word joy is used. It is the book of joy in the New Testament, and he wrote it when he was in prison. If you were sitting in prison right now for preaching the gospel, you'd probably be maybe sucking your thumb, feeling sorry for you, for yourself. I preach to some people tonight right now, maybe you're feeling sorry for yourself. Paul said, I'm full of joy. And he's sitting in a Roman prison. When I think about you, he said, I'm offering thanks to God for you. He said, when I think about you, he said, it just fills me with joy. Hallelujah. You know, maybe you're talking to, to your brothers and sisters. You know what you need to do? You need to look at them and say, you know what? You fill me with joy. You go, really me? Yeah, I'm, yeah, you. When I look at you, I thank God for you. Hallelujah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. If you want to be like Paul, you will. God bless your sweet smiling face. Looks your neighbor and Paul, tell him Paul's showing us how to deal with relationships. Oh, yeah, boy. We, do we want to hear this? Or do y'all want me to just let you go home? Okay. Okay. Well, we'll keep going then. All right. So when you look at your brother and sister, are you full of thanks? Hallelujah. <laughs> full of joy. God's enabling power. You got peace in your life. Amen. Always in every prayer of mine for you all making requests with joy. Man, this book is about joy. It's about rejoicing. Amen. And I promise you, if you start looking at your brothers and sisters this way, and you're thanking God for them, and you're filled with joy, and you approach relationships the way Paul is talking about, you know what's going to happen? You're going to have joy in your life. Paul was filled with joy. Bad news, yeah, but joy. And so, why is he so happy? Why is he so uh, filled with joy? Why is he so thankful for this church of Philippi? Well, first of all, he talks about the reason why. And he talks about fellowship. Okay? So, let me read the verse to you. Here's what he's thankful for and filled with joy. He said, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Wow. He said, I thank God and I'm full of joy because when I remember you, your fellowship in the gospel. He said, you are in a partnership. The Greek word is koinonia. Fellowship doesn't mean, you know, that went out to eat together. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't say fellowship either. It doesn't say fellowship either. It's fellowship. Look at me say fellowship. Koinonia. That means partnership. It means participation. So Paul says, when I look at that church, he said, what makes me so thankful and so full of joy is he said, because you partnered with me. You participated with me. In the spreading of the gospel. Amen. In the fourth chapter we talked about God is our strength a few weeks ago. Paul talked about Epaphroditus. They, they, they sent an offering from this church of Philippi to Paul while he was in prison in Rome. And, and Paul very rarely received anything from the churches. But he did from them. Because there was a relationship there. They loved each other. There was a partnership. There was a participation. And the church of Philippi would send support to the Apostle Paul and participated in the gospel. Hallelujah. Isn't that amazing? Amen. Praise the Lord God. This was an amazing thing. You think about Lydia, the first convert of Europe. Her heart, God opened her heart to hear the gospel. You think about the jailer and his family. The Bible said the jailer washed their wounds. wounds. There was a beautiful relationship that Paul had with his church. And he says, what makes me so thankful and so full of joy 
is that you're in a partnership with me. Amen. Spreading the gospel. He said, we're in this together. He's an apostle, but he doesn't say, I'm the big guy, I'm the big eye, and you're little. He said, no, we're in this together. Praise God, hallelujah. There's a partnership. He said, you're ministering to me, and I'm ministering to you. We're in a participation of getting this gospel spread. Hallelujah. And I want you to know, I thank God for you, church. Because y'all are in a partnership with us. With me, my wife. P participation. Helping getting the gospel out. But it ain't a one-man show here. It can't be a one-man show. There's a partnership. Koinonia. A participation. A fellowship. That's in the body of Christ. And that's what causes Paul to be thankful and to rejoice when he thinks about them. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. The first day when they walked in, him and Timothy and Silas and Luke and God in them. The first day he walked in and, and God opened the heart of Lydia. And revival break out in that little town, that little city. It was Rome, little Rome is what it was. People walking around in Roman togas, living the Roman lifestyle, you know. And here comes these four with God in them. And God brings revival, opens their hearts, and they hear the gospel. And then all, just right off, they made a partnership with Paul. They supported the Apostle Paul. They blessed the Apostle Paul. And if you look in Corinthians, when Paul talks to the church of Corinth, remember, he wouldn't take any offerings from them. You know why? Because of the background of that church. Anybody and everybody that wanted to teach a philosopher that came into town, they always had their hand out. I'll teach you, but you got to pay me. That was the background of the church of Corinth. So Paul wouldn't receive support from them because he didn't want to be connected with those charlatans. He didn't want to be connected with those hucksters. Give God praise in the house. So he refrained from receiving support from the church. But when he wrote the church of Corinth, he talked about the church of Macedonia. And he said before they gave their finances to him, they gave themselves to him. And that's why Paul would receive from them what he would not receive from the church of Corinth. Because the church of Corinth would just say, well, this Paul's in it for the money. He, they, the relationship wasn't what it was with the church of Philippi. But because they first gave themselves to Paul. And then they gave the finances. Paul received that partnership, that fellowship. Amen? And so that's what he's so full of joy about. That's what he is extremely thankful to God for is that there's somebody that's in a relationship with Him. They care about Him. He cares about them. And they're spreading the gospel. Isn't that an amazing thing? For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. He said you didn't quit. Woo, hallelujah. You didn't start and then, you know, and then quit after a little while. He said you kept on. In that partnership. In that participation. Give the Lord praise in the house. Well he keeps talking about why he's thankful. And why he has so much joy. Not only because of the partnership. But he said I've got some confidence in you. And what is his confidence? He said being confident. Of this very thing. And this is the part that you and I know very well. And we quote it. We memorize it. That he. Say he. Who's he? God. He is God. Who hath begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He said when I look at you church. He said I know you're going through persecution right now. I know you're suffering right now. I know there's problems in the church right now. I know there's opposition right now. But he said I'm confident that you're going to keep going. I'm confident that you're not going to quit. I'm confident. He said, I can, I can, he said, I can look at your history as a church. I can look at you as a people. And I've seen you go through things. I've seen you suffer. And you didn't quit. You didn't give up. And Paul says, I'm confident that you'll keep on going. 
that the work that God has begun in you, He's going to complete it. He's going to finish it until the day of Jesus Christ. What is that day of Jesus Christ? The Old Covenant, the Old Testament, and sometimes the New Testament called it the day of the Lord. And that's when Jesus comes back to the earth, the day of Christ. He comes back to the earth to judge. Judge.